What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So I know it's a little something different, but we have somebody that wanted to come on the channel and share their story. So he said he had a story he wanted to tell. He's he's actually in the wheelchair. And what's up, bro? What's up? What's up, my man? How you doing? Shit, cool, man. What you got going on? Nothing, man. Chilling, chilling. How you doing? I'm good, bro. Hey, you can hear me good. Or I need to put AirPods in or anything. Um. Yeah. 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 I would say probably put your AirPods in. All right. Give me a second. Just so you can kind of hear me and everything. So the actual sound is an echo went off the walls. Yeah, I can hear a little bit better. Okay, okay. What you got going on, man? Nothing, man. Chilling, man. Just worked out today. Played with the dogs a little bit. I seen that. You know, we got ready for this interview. I seen that. I seen your story a little while ago. Okay, okay. I appreciate it. I appreciate the support. <laughs> you know, me and the wife greatly appreciate it. You know it, bro. Yeah. How you doing, though? I'm good, man. I'm just trying to stay positive, man. Shit, okay, it, okay. It gets wicked, man. Trust me. I, trust me. I, I definitely understand. I've been there. I've been there. I'll be watching you, bro. No lie. For real? Yeah. For real? Uh, when when you start was, watching me? All right. So I I was in the hospital. You know, it really happened. I ain't going to say a lot to you. Last year, right around this time, I ain't want to, you know, so I could talk okay. about it, but I ain't want to go too much into like legal, okay. legalities and stuff. You know what I'm saying? But um, got, okay. I, got, I got hit, you know, I was in the hospital and my You dad, know what? You know what? You know what? But, before we yeah. actually start, you know, you, you know, tell us your name. Tell us a little bit about you. You know, where you from, your age, you know, stuff like that. All right, man. My name is Nick. I'm 25. Okay. I'm from okay. East Coast, South Carolina, really. How old are you? 25. 25? Okay. Yes, okay. Sir. That's a good age. <laughs> I remember that age. Hey, look, it's a good age. It's a good age. Okay. Okay. All right, then. You know, we're going to beat around the bush. You got the floor, my man. Yeah, man. Uh, kind of going back to what you were saying. I, uh, okay. I, I really followed you. I was really in the hospital. You know what I'm saying? And my dad, mm -hmm. he was kind of trying to reach out. You know, trying to find somebody for me to kind of watch with my situation. And okay, shout the pops. Facts. And he actually, yeah. he actually, I, he Facetimed me one night. He was like, "Hey, uh, go on YouTube. Look this dude up named Wheelchair Kev." So I go on YouTube, look it up. Well, I really went on Instagram first. I was like, <laughs> okay. And I ain't, I ain't gonna lie. I was looking at him like, damn, bro, I got the Hellcat. You know what yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> so, I appreciate it. So once that happened, you know, I started tuning in. I ain't gonna lie. I haven't really watched. Last video I really watched was, um, oh, which one was that? It was the one where you posted that little YouTube short. It was like where you was transferring okay. out the car. So I watched Okay, that. okay, okay. And okay. I, at, before you, before I joined, you know what I'm saying? Cause I was looking through YouTube and shit. Mm -hmm. I can, I'm good. All right. So you good, you good, you um, good. So I looked. I seen you just post a new video. I think two days ago. So I'm gonna okay. do that after we do this. So uh, I appreciate but, it. You been in a wheelchair a year? Yeah, it'll be, um, be a year and like a week. Okay, okay, a year and about a week. Okay. Are you looking sure. forward to that date? Or are you, you know, dreading? Like, how you feeling about that date? I don't like that date, man. I understand. I'm with you. I'm with you. Every 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 time that date come around, you know. With my incident, it's, it's personal. I try to block it out. Like, I try not to harp too much on the date, but it's just, it's, it's there. You know, you know it. So, you know, trust me, I definitely understand because I go through it every single year Back. at that time. You know, because, you know, for me, I'll be 10 years in the wheelchair. You know, so it's just tax on another year. So, trust me, I, I, I definitely understand how you feel. And, look, I'm with you. I'm with you. There's a whole lot of other people, you know, millions of people that's in wheelchairs we with you, you know. Trust me, I know it's a hard time right now, but yeah, look, at least you here. Fact, all right. That's what my mom always tell me. You know what I'm saying? Because it gets, mm -hmm. like yep. I said, bro, it gets wicked. You know what I'm saying? Especially exactly when it's just you exactly. and your thoughts. You know what I'm saying? Trust me, I, be, I look. I've been there. I've been there. All right. Tr like, like I tried to do anything and everything that you, you know to really just get out my head. And like the only way I was able to do that was music. You know, I just dove into music. I just listened to a whole bunch of music. You know, you know, music is like the gateway, you know, like I like everybody can pretty much relate to music. You know, we all got a you know certain song that we like. We all got yeah. songs that get us in our mood and stuff like that. You know, and it just certain music really just helped me, you know. It was very therapeutic, you know, and also me doing YouTube videos, therapeutic as well. And then me finally sharing my story to where people, you know, found out how I actually became wheelchair bound. It, yeah. it was very therapeutic, you know, you know, with the amount of people that actually hit me up, they need help 
or something like that. Like I'm more than grateful to give out the knowledge because at the time at, you know, a year into my paralysis, I didn't know anything. I ain't have no knowledge. The only thing I knew was, you know, what came from occupational therapy and physical therapy. Facts. You I know, can, I know what you're saying on that one for sure. Yeah. And, uh, and like I was in denial so much because it just, I just didn't want to believe that I was in a wheelchair, you know, so I avoided everything that was like, you know, that had to do with being in a wheelchair, you know, like I just rebelled and it was a wrong thing to do because I didn't have no knowledge. Like people, you know, my uncle, he's actually in the wheelchair and he passed away. But before he passed away, he wrote me, you know, he wanted to kind of give me some game. You know, and I was just, I was just so in my head that I never wrote him and he ended up passing away and is really one of the biggest regrets that I actually have. You know, it's just, I did not want to talk to people that was in witches because I was just so in denial. And, but I just, but I finally realized that I should have been talking to people in witches. I should have been, you know, getting game from them, you yeah. know, because they might know something that you might not know about, or they might tell you something that the physical therapist didn't tell you. You know, the physical therapist, they can tell you so much, but they ain't in a wheelchair. You You're know, right. so it, it, it's a big difference. So, all right, my man, let's let's go ahead and get into your story. Tell us what happened. You ain't got to harp on it too much if it's, you know, touchy or, you know, uh, if you can't get into it because, you know, uh, like legal ramifications. Like, yeah. trust me, we understand. But just tell us, you know, like, tell us what happened. Like, tell us as much as you can. All right, like long story short, man, it was a, uh, it was a, uh, um, I just at work that day, you know what I'm saying, with a job I was just starting, came home from work, mm -hmm. took a shower, and you know, kind of got my, it was about six, seven at night, you know, started my day, went out, got some eat. Long mm -hmm. story short, man, I, I, I was put in a situation, um, I was put in a situation where it was multiple, multiple people. It wasn't just three, four, five. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of people, bro. So. Okay. Um, was you just uh, by yourself? Was this after work, or did they just come upon you? After work, this was. I, I put, okay. I really have. I really put myself in a bad situation. You know what I'm saying? Like I, okay. I didn't want to get okay. too into okay. it. Okay. Right, okay. Okay. But I put myself in a bad situation, and there was a large number of people. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. it was kind of you know give us this. Okay. Everybody has something. You know. Everybody has mm -hmm. something. So. I was with somebody. That person actually left me to die, bro. You know, it's crazy. But For, okay. Yeah. Bullets started flying, and dude left me, and it was just me and me, a large number of people. And, you know, mm -hmm. they shot first. And like I said, you know, I defended myself. Really was crazy, bro. I got hit, like, right by my heart. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't get okay. hit in the heart. So mm -hmm. I got hit. Oh. Uh, I'm like one side of this is what they tell me, but one side I'm T nine, the other side I'm like T eleven, T ten, something okay. like that. Okay. Okay. Um, it hit my chest and like collapsed one of my lungs, hit my liver. Mm -hmm. It was lungs, liver, stomach, and my spine. So it really did me dirt. Okay. You know, just yeah, it was just one time, just one time. And actually, if I'm if I'm correct, I really can't remember too well from whenever. Okay. I was kind of informed with everything. It was about. 60 to 70 plus shots that was out there that night and i only got mm -hmm. hit once man so it was a blessing you know i could have really yeah it was it was it could have yeah. been bad very bad i mean it's bad enough mm -hmm. as it is you know but like my mom always tell me you know at least you're not a vegetable and you're not in a box so exactly exactly okay so so it was just one shot one one gunshot that you actually took and it just bounced around yeah it hit me right in the chest bro right up like right here on my left mm, side okay and okay, then, okay. Okay. I was the same way. Yup. Okay. Okay. It missed your heart and then what it it traveled from the heart to where? To the lung? Like, yeah, I'm I'm not exactly sure what was hit first or whatever, but okay. I know for a fact. The bullet's still in me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because they couldn't get it out during surgery. They said it'd be more damaged okay. to get it out than to leave it in. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, um yeah, it hit my lungs, it hit one of my lungs, and then hit okay. my liver and my stomach. And then my spine, okay. of course. But what's crazy, okay. when I got hit and I fell, and I tried to jump back up. Like, I could tell, you know what I'm saying? I really thought I was in shock, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, damn, uh -huh. my body not registering to get the hell back up, you know? And then mm -hmm. I went to take a breath, and, bro, I just felt like water was getting poured in my lungs, you know what I'm saying? Exactly, exactly. You suffocated uh, at that moment. Yeah, so I, I've been on the ground, mm -hmm. and I still had, you know what I'm saying, what I was defending myself with, and... I've been looking, making sure nobody else was coming. 
I just hear everybody start mm-hmm. running, start running, and then cars leaving and shit like that. And mm-hmm. I, I ain't gonna lie, bro. I called my mama, bro. I ain't even called nine one one, bro. I called my mom. That's understandable. And what's crazy, bro? My mom wasn't even home, or she wasn't even in the room with the phone. The phone was on the charger, and my pops picked up. He was like, "What's up, son?" I'm like, "Man, dad, this ain't a joke, man. I done got hit." Like, mm-hmm. I'm like he's like, "Where you at? Where you at?" I'm like, "Man." I, Everything went blank, you know what I'm saying? Like I knew, yeah. I knew where I was at. Like I knew where I was yeah. at until that moment. I did everything mm-hmm. went dark, and then um, he was like, uh, "Where are you?" At? I was like, "I'm gonna send you my current location." So I was thinking clearly enough to send my location. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I sent my location, and by that time, you know, my mom was like, "You know, we love you, this and that." She's like, "Just, just, you know," she's like, "Where yeah. are you at?" Well, she kept yelling, you know how, you know how mom is, mm-hmm. man. So. Yeah, she uh, she's like, you need to call nine one one. So I hang up the phone with them, and I had to call nine one one. And by that time, like as soon as I pick up the phone, the woman's like, "Are you Nick? Uh, my name? You know what I'm saying? Are you Nick?" I was like, "Yeah." She's like, "Well, your dad's already on the other line talking to us, and this and that." Mm-hmm. So, and everything. I ain't a lie. I don't remember too much. I remember putting the phone down. Like, like okay, the woman on the phone was like, uh, she was like, you know, you need to uh, stay on the phone with me. And like it, I was getting annoyed, you know what I'm saying? I was like, mm-hmm. like it was it was irritating me. And I yeah, remember, uh-huh. I had a real personal moment, you know what I'm saying? I just remember saying, kept repeating something out loud, you know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna lie, bro. I thought it mm. was the end, bro. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't. Yeah, move. yeah. So, okay. Uh, so uh, by that time, man, I kept, you know, I'm going in and out, you know, those mm-hmm. out. By I know how I, I feel, my, man. I looked to my left, and it was like I just seen blue light. And I went black out again, woke up, and it was like some like two, three people standing over me, like shaking mm-hmm. my chest. They're like, man, you yeah. gotta get up, man, you gotta get up. And I remember getting put in the ambulance. And then okay. I remember being in I guess wherever they first take you when you first get I guess the hospital the local hospital. Yeah. I remember being in there and kinda now I remember falling back asleep. And I remember the next mm-hmm. thing I remember, and the last thing I remember, I was in the ambulance again. I'm like, bro, why I'm in? The, why am I in the ambulance? Like, I was, I was mm, okay. you know what I'm saying, acting a mm-hmm. fool, bro. So, the woman was like, you know, you're not gonna make it. You know, we we can't even get you to where you need to be. We can't fly you by helicopter because there ain't no one here oh. fast enough. We gotta drive you. So, Damn. that's when I knew it was real. So I remember mm-hmm. dozing out, and she was like, "You gotta tell me if you can't breathe." And I remember one time I was like, "I can't." And she, they stuck this long ass needle in my shoulder. I just remember kind of mm. feeling like shoulder in my chest. Yeah, that's the last thing I remember, bro. I remember waking up in ICU and where I was at, and I remember just like, bro, I don't know if you had this shit when you was in the hospital, but the craziest dreams, man, like, man, yes, yes, craziest dreams, bro. Yes, yes, like shit man. that I can't even, I can't even talk to nobody yeah. about. It's just personal, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, trust me, I understand, man. Like, I, man, I would wake up port just drenched in sweat. You know, because the dreams I was having, man, it just, it just, you know, like I had some good dreams. I had some bad dreams, but it's just, man, like those dreams I still remember to this day. Like I still speak about them dreams to this 100%. day, you know, because I had one dream that actually really kind of like is shaping up to turn into, you know, reality. So, it, man, in a way, it felt like I saw the future, but then, you know, like at the same time, it was like I was outside of myself and I, man, it's... Oh, trust me, is tr- tr- I know exactly what you went through, and it's crazy because our story kind of shares a lot of uh, you know similarities. You know, like the bullet bounced around, it went through, hit the sack around my heart, so they had to take the sack out that's around my heart. It's called like the amniotic sac, so it didn't hit my heart, but it it, it did in a way. You know, yeah. so they it took they took that out, hit my lung, and uh, pretty much. The bullet was traveling so fast that when it came to a stop, it sent the shockwave out. And that's what kind of collapsed the vertebrae, you know, and I'm T10, T11. You know okay. what I mean? So, you know, same thing. I couldn't breathe, man. Like, I kept passing in and out. You know, like, uh, I, I, I tried to call my mom, tried to call my dad. N- neither one of them picked up. You know, so, it, man, it, it was like I was just feeling like it's the end. And, like, the only thing I could really think about was just, you know, not panicking. You know, and and then, and then from there, it just I just focus like like it's like you know when you going through that and your lung is like filling up with like blood or whatever it's filling up with like that liquid like you literally suffocating and it was like you know you put a balloon over your mouth and you stick a needle through it and like 
that small little that small little bit of air is like what you really breathing in. So it's like you really like just in that mode where you about to panic and like is it like you just feel like it's life or death. Yeah. And I just kept passing in and out. I woke up in the ambulance. She was like, Can you breathe? Can you breathe? You know, I'm cussing at her like I'm like, nah, you know what I mean? Like I'm saying all types of stuff because I'm mad because I feel like the air, the oxygen was spitting water in my face. And, you know, I passed out from there, woke up on the operating table. And then from the operating table, I didn't wake up till like three weeks later. So, you know, trust. I Look, I understand. I Like, trust me, I I definitely understand. Yeah. Um, So, all right, so you've been in the wheelchair almost a year. Yeah. What do you think, what do you think personally has been the biggest obstacle that you face since you actually been in a wheelchair? You know, it's crazy, bro. I tell, like, I got to tell my, my right hand man this, like, being mm -hmm. paralyzed, bro, ain't nothing. It's the shit that come with being paralyzed. Okay, and that's, yeah. And you know exactly what I'm talking about, bro. You know what I'm saying? Exactly, exactly. Like, bro, the fact that my legs don't work, it, I, I've accepted that. It's not a problem. Mm -hmm. It's just all yeah. the other things, you know, bladder, yeah. bowel program. Yep. Like, like, bro, nobody yep. trying to do that, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Look, 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 trust me. Look, I was, I was, in, I was, I was there, like, like for real, like I, I was there, you know, I didn't want to accept that, you know, and with that, it comes a lot of other things, you know what I mean? So it's just, you got to get that stuff under control so you can literally move forward with your life, you know, cause a lot of that stuff, like, you know, I didn't want to calf at first. I didn't want to, you know, do a, uh, a do bowel management at the time. Cause I just couldn't, I couldn't fathom you know, what I had to do to actually use the bathroom. Survive, You know bro. what I mean? So, exactly. So, that right there caused a whole bunch of accidents, you know? Like, I'd be out, have an accident, it's like, damn, you, you, you know, like, it was just a problem. You know, like, I felt some type of way. I know my family felt some type of way. I know my girl felt some type of way. And it's just like, me wanting to not really accept it was kind of putting them in situations. It was putting me in situations. You know what I mean? Yeah. And. And all that stuff really didn't change until I had to change that mindset. And I'm like, you know what? If you're going to survive, like, you got to do this stuff. You know, because I I went to the hospital and then, you know, uh, this dude kind of, you know, like, uh, like gave me some game. And he pretty much told me, like, if you don't do your bowel management, you can have a heart attack. You know, things can happen to where, you know what I mean? Like, like it take you out. Facts. You know, so so trust me, my man. Like, if you ain't on a bow program, look, hit me up offline. We talk about it. You know what I mean? Like, I tell you how I got there. I tell you exactly what I do. Exactly, you know what I mean? Yeah. How I go about stuff. And look, I do my bow in the morning every morning. You know what I mean? If I want to switch it up and do it every other day, I can. You know, I net I never have an accident that, that has to deal with a number two. Like, in years, my man, like probably like six years. You know, because my bowel program works so good, but it comes with discipline. You know, it comes with not eating after a certain time. You know what I mean? Taking your medicine, you know what I mean? Like, on point. You know, it, look, the same goes with Catherine as well. Yeah. You know, it, that deals with hygiene. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. you got to be as clean, as clean as possible. You know what I mean? But I know how it feels having to stick a catheter up there. You know what I mean? Like, just that that visual, just it don't sit right. That shit wicked, you know? man. It, it, trust me. I know, but you got to do it, Fact. you know, because if you don't do that, it lead, it lead, what? It lead to accidents, all right? It lead to UTIs, you know, stuff that you don't want to have to deal with, you know, but trust me, I, I've i been there, I already know all right? It. I've been there. I, I Like, I've been there. It was, For two years, I ain't, I, I pretty much ain't leave the bed for two years, my man, like, like, that's how down I was, like, how bad, how down bad I really was, and, and, like, just to see everybody really just enjoying life around me. That's what really kind of changed my perspective on everything because, you know, they going to feel down when they come around me. Then, you know, eventually they ain't going to want to be around me, you know, and it's just like, you know, they going to leave from here and go off and live their life and enjoy it. And I'm going to just be right here in the bed, just just mad, m mad at the world, can't accept it. You know what I mean? And it's just like, you know what? I, don't, I really don't want to be living like this. You know, I'm staying in my parents' basement, you know, and. Man, once I changed, once I changed that mindset, look, I'm t everything got better. Yeah, everything. That's like why everything. That's why so I respect what you say so much, bro, because you're so like, what's the mm -hmm. word? like I wouldn't say I, I, I can say forthcoming, but you know, like so 
so 100 with it. Like, you know what I'm saying? There's no sugar yeah. coating. Like, mm-hmm. this what I did. You know, this was going on. Like, that's yeah. why. Like, I'll be honest. Like, you know, how me and you talked a little bit. Like, I ain't 100% embraced how I look in a wheelchair. You know what I'm saying? I went from being mm-hmm. damn near almost six foot five to what? Four foot? Yeah. Being in a wheelchair. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, that's crazy that you said that. I was thinking about that this morning. You know what I mean? Because I'm naturally 6'2". Yeah. You know, so it's just like, it's just like, dang, like, you know, for the later part of my life, you, you know, actually walking, people would be like, man, you so tall, blah, blah. You know what I mean? And it's just like, now I'm like four foot something. 100%. You know, so so trust me. And I, I might take pictures here and there, but I still ain't embrace, you know, the image of me in a wheelchair. Yeah. That's why I don't really take pictures like that. I do take pictures, don't get me wrong, but... If I can avoid a picture of full body, I will. You know what I mean? So, trust me. I I, I understand 100% where you're coming from. Yeah, man. The reason why I'm able to be so forthcoming with it is because I know how it feels to be in your position. You know, I know how it feels to really not have the knowledge in, you know, the situations that it could lead to, you know, health-wise. You know, like, man, pretty much me not wanting to do all that stuff, man, that led me to be in a hospital for two months. Damn. You know what I mean? And it just I, exactly, man. And that's and that's what you that's what you really want to try to avoid because you know we in a wheelchair, we got spinal cord injuries, man. Anything, I ain't gonna say anything, but trust me, we a little bit more susceptible to stuff than other people. You know that's why you know they took out my lung, so I made it a fact. You know the whole COVID thing. Like, look, I ain't trying to be around too many people. Since to this day, knock on wood, I still haven't caught COVID. But I know for a fact I got one lung, so I know I got, you know, this is a respiratory disease. So, you know, you got to kind of be, you know, careful because that shit can hit my lung and, you know, it's over with. I might be 10 times worse than the next person. You got to be on your P's and Q's, man, 10 times more now with the situation. Exactly, my man. That's why I always be wearing my mask. People be like, oh, you wearing your mask, blah, blah, blah. Man, look, this could be life or death for us. You're right, man. And it's hard. Yeah. It's hard. To, okay, okay. It's hard to accept that. You know what I'm saying? I can I can read. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I can read the energy. You know, you give off, man. You just say I feel like we're the same type of person. Like you don't want to accept because yeah. you're so set in your ways and want to be a man. Mm-hmm. And, you know what I'm saying? It's like, damn, I yeah. can't. Be, uh-huh. like, I can't even be a man. Like I can't help somebody move furniture. I can't. You know. I. You know what I'm saying, man? Hey, my man. Look, look. I'm gonna be honest with you. You can. All right. You really can, cause. Look, I went down to Georgia. I had to help my sister move. You know, look, when we moved into this house, I had to help move. You know, so I don't want you to look at it like you can't do it, my man. It's just you probably just won't be able to do it to, you know, I would say like the the full aspect that you could if you was, you know, walking, but you can still do something. Right. You know, you know, so I don't want you to feel like that because I've been there. I know where that can lead to as well. Yeah. You know, so, um. Let me go ahead and ask you some questions that that some people that actually subscribe to. I mean, not subscribe that, but that's actually followed me on IG since then. All right. So we don't really know because you ain't really harp on it, and we ain't gonna have you harp on it. Yeah. But they was trying to get you for something. Yeah. Right. Hundred percent. Okay. Do you regret fighting back? Not at all, bro. Not at all. Not one bit. That's fine to stand on that. Yeah, you know. That's what I'm fine. Can, Principles. I can go to bed every night knowing, you know, I tried my best. I'm not gonna say I tried okay. my best. They didn't get nothing from me, so. You know, mm, okay. mission, mission accomplished on my end. You know, just, it just mm-hmm. came with some some consequences. You know, as you, yeah, and, okay. You know, okay. what it is. Okay, okay. And when you say legal ramifications, is it they fighting something or are you fighting something as well? Just them. I'm good, bro. It's self defense. Oh, just them. Yeah. Okay. But okay. I, all right then. Just all right just, then. You good? Just because of what's going on, I don't. You know. Okay. Yeah, what's, what's nah, it's what's fine. It's fine. Don't have to be explained, bro. With the whole incident that happened, do you do you have any anger towards them? Yeah, that's understandable. Yeah, bro. Trust me. Ooh. Trust, look, I I thought about that for like two hours today. All right. I'm pretty sure you see my video. I'm pretty sure you know how I got paralyzed. Yeah, man. I literally had to, you know, because we spoke about it briefly to chat on IG about how you got paralyzed, yeah. right? And, like, I had to actually put myself there and think, of, you know, like, would I want some type of revenge or, you know, like, how would I feel towards them? And I know what type of person I am, my man, and I'm going to just save it for offline. Like, I thought about that for, like, two hours, my man. Like, okay. Now, I'm going to put myself in your, 
in your position right now? Because, like I said, I've been there. You coming up on a year anniversary since you've been in a wheelchair. Yeah. Um. Okay, so you mentioned your bowel program, and you ain't really said nothing about Catherine, but you did yeah. hop on, you know, at like the bowel program. Okay, so do you feel like that you you having a problem in that area? To be honest, or uh, yeah, not really. But okay, but, okay, so you good with it? Yeah, like I, like I, it's about like being uncomfortable talking about it. No, uh, uh, like, like, uh, I would say, how is it going for you? Oh, is it going good for you? Yeah, it's straight, bro. Like, I mean, I still, okay. I'll be honest, bro. Like, like you said earlier, you know what I'm saying? It's been a long time since you had a, a accident on the, on the number two side, but I ain't, yeah. I ain't had an accident on that end in some, a good okay. while, a good while. You know what I'm saying? It's okay. Really, it's really on okay. the ladder, bro. And that's really what I'm struggling with. Okay. I'm actually, that's why I told you I got somebody, my doctor calling me in a little while. Cause they talking about okay. giving me Botox in my bladder, bro. And I, I hate needles. Okay. Bro. I hate needles. I hate them. Okay. Yeah. Try, me too. Me too. So it's me like, too. I don't like needles either. So it's like, damn, they gotta knock me out and do this. It's like, and like my mom mm-hmm. asked me, like, what you gonna do? I'm like, mom, I ain't got no choice. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Do, yeah. do I want to yeah. be grown man pissing on myself? Nah, mm-hmm. bro, we ain't doing that, man. Exactly. Exactly. You don't. You don't. Um. So do you take any medication currently? Yeah. To deal with that, or uh, okay, I'm, I'm on. Uh, uh, damn, uh, my, you on oxybutynin? Nah, nah. That's let me tell you. This is crazy, bro. They had me that on that in the hospital, and it was making my hair like fall out, bro. Like for real? I swear, not a lot. Like only when I brush okay. my hair and wash my hair. Like, okay, was, like but I'm on uh, my vetric and uh, dang something else. My vetric and something else. I can't remember the other one. It's two pills at night. How is that working for you? Is it? Are you able to manage or? It's weird. Nah. It's weird, bro. And, like, and I, also, how how often are you captain as well? Oh, uh, it, this uh, that's another thing that's kind of crazy. But uh, I drink a, okay. I drink a good bit of water. So in the morning, okay, captain, same captain wise, I you know I they tell you do it every four to six hours. But me, I mm-hmm. got a cast when I especially when I get up right when I get up. You know, I get up about seven in the morning. Yep. And then boom, mm-hmm. I, I try to do it again right at about ten. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I already know. You know, your kidneys work the hardest when you're sleeping. You know, you're pumping out water. Mm-hmm. So, and then right at the end, then right around lunchtime, you know, right about 12, okay. one o'clock at the latest. And then I'll be good, mm-hmm. you know, probably one time, probably about four or five, and then one time about eight or nine, and then right before bed. So, mm-hmm. five, six times a day. Okay. Bro. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Same. Same. I, I think. All right. So I calf right when I first wake up. Then I probably won't calf again until, and I wake up, it could vary from six to seven to eight, you know, mm-hmm. but I, but. I always try to wake up early. Um, Got to. And then from there, I, yeah, and then from there, it just really kind of depends on if I work out or if I take a pre-workout or something like that. If I take a pre-workout, then I pretty much got to calf within like an hour and a half after that. <laughs> so then I probably might, yeah, so then I probably might calf at like maybe 11. But if I don't work out or I don't take a pre-workout, then I ain't really got to calf until like maybe like 12 or 1. I remember, you know, I remember when I used to take pre-workout, but that shit run right through you, man. Right through you, yeah, my man. That's trust me, trust me, yes. I'm like, bro, that's crazy. It, it does. And uh, pretty much, man, when it comes to being in a wheelchair, one of the biggest things, and I try to tell people this all the time, you got to watch your body. Your body is going to react to things a certain way. You got to look at your body. You got to watch your body. You know, when you wear shoes, you know, and you see like a red spot on your foot, you know, try to switch it up. Feel inside the shoe, you know, see what's going on. See what, see See what's putting pressure right there. You know what's crazy? You know, I'm so, in a boot. Yeah. I'm in a boot right now because the chair they okay. the loaner chair they gave me at the hospital when I left was mm-hmm. it wasn't built for somebody who's six five, bro. It was built for my like five mm, ten. Oh, yeah. So my feet okay. was constantly riding on the foot plate, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And my mm-hmm. foot, my heel, it's a it's a bad big old hole in my heel, bro. I can see the back of my Achilles. I can see my Achilles mm-hmm. on my heel. It's okay. finally, finally starting to heal. It's about the size of a size of a dime really so i'm just okay it, trying okay. to stay off my feet you know off the yeah. plate and yeah yeah you gotta elevate them feet as well my man yeah, elevate them you know so okay okay and look I'm, i ain't gonna lie that's gonna happen all right but th- that's why you also gotta pay attention because if you ain't paying attention stuff like that is going to happen and trust me, I know the feeling of, you know, want, like like having to pay attention. Like sometimes I don't really like looking at my butt. You know what I mean? But I have to, you know, you you just got to be cautious. And trust me, you want to pay attention to it so it don't build up and it leads to something way bigger down the line. You know, 
this is something that you can probably, you know, nip in the bud within like, you know, uh, one, two days, you know, versus, you know, something leaving you in a hospital for two months. That's my biggest you know, fear, so. Man. Yeah, my man. So you want to pay attention to your body. You like, like, trust me, pay attention. Look, have somebody look at your butt. Have somebody look at your heel. Always, always be paying attention to your body because your body is going to tell you when, you know, something ain't, something ain't going right. Exactly. You know, and also when it comes to Catherine, you know, you got to kind of figure out what works for you. So, you you know, you got to pay attention to that as well. You know, you know, like for, for me. The only time I'll have an accident is if I'm coming on to like a UTI or if I've been smoking and I cough. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you feel me? So that's the only time. That's the only time that I'm really gonna have an accident. But outside of that, I'm I, I'm good because I stick to a schedule, and that's what I said before. Discipline. You got to mature a little bit now. You know, and. That comes to taking your medicine. So I make sure I take in the morning I take vitamin D and I take oxybutynin. The oxybutynin is for my bladder. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, you're right. So so that helps me manage my uh uh my captain schedule and everything. So like like I said, uh you just gotta figure out a schedule, what works for you, the best times for everything, and then I would say go from there. Did you ever have to uh, get Botox in your bladder? No, nah, I never had to get Botox. I never had to get Botox in my body because the oxybutynin work works really good. So I don't really have to. So I don't really have a problem where I gotta kind of go somewhere else or you know do something else because the actual oxybutynin that they give me, I think it's like a point five milligrams. That actually works good for me. So I don't really have to worry about that. See, bro, I, I'm 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 really contemplating that now. Like I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. That's like. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how I feel about it. You know, everybody, like my support system, you know, everybody's like, yeah, what you can do is try it. I'm like, bro, that's easy for y'all to say. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not saying that in a disrespectful way at all. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, of course, it's easy if you say, oh, try it. What's the worst that can happen? But bro, mm -hmm. like, they sticking tubes in my dick. You know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to do that, man. Yeah. No, nah, look. <sighs> Trust me, I understand what you mean yeah. here as well. They they ain't got to go through it. They ain't got to visually see it, you know. But in that situation, my man, look, you gonna only have to deal with that for like an hour or whatever, and then trust me, moving forward, ho hopefully, or it should get better, you know. That's why me and my wife, we you know, we going through fertility stuff right now, and this very last one. I was kind of putting off because they got to go inside my testicle, cut it up. You know what I mean? They got to pretty much do a biopsy on my testicle to try to get semen out. So it's just like, you know, she is over here telling me, nah, babe, we got to do this. Like, like, I can't even really believe that you would even feel some type of way when, you know, we're trying to have a, you know, a child. But she's not understanding that she ain't the one that got to kind of go through it. You know, it's, 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 it's mental. You know, it, it it messes you up in the head because everybody else is working fine or, you know, is working perfectly, you know, and yours, you know, like you kind of got a little problem, you know, you got you know go to the doctor, you're getting bad news, you ain't getting the news that you want to hear, you know, and, it, you know, I feel like it's just roadblock after roadblock and like she, she might think it's okay, but it's a real big blow to your ego, you know. For me, I, I, I got an ego. I don't like asking people for help, none of that stuff. 100%. You know, and man, and just having to ask people for help, I feel some type of way. That's why I don't ever really ask somebody for help unless it's my family. But I would say that ego is just one big thing that it'll really just, that shit will sit you down eventually. Like, it's going to sit you down eventually because you're going to get into a situation where you got to kind of put that pride to the side and look, you're going to need help. All right? And trust me, that shit happened to me. And when it happened to me, it kept happening over and over again, over and over again, until I just accepted the fact that I was in a wheelchair and I had to move forward. And I and I want to go through a lot of the things that I was going through for two years. I'm trying to go out and be able to have fun, like enjoy my time out. Now I have to worry about, oh, you know what I mean? Like, did I have an accident or, you know what I mean? Did I use the bathroom myself or like, you know, like we got to leave, you know, like once I, once I managed that, I was able to, you know, go out. I was able to start driving, just doing different things, man. You know, traveling, you know, get on airplanes, you know, so. I'm so ready to drive, trust, man. You is? Cool. Man. You haven't drove yet? No, man. I ain't, no. Okay. I ain't got a chance to okay, drive so, yet. Okay, is it because 
Is it because you ain't got a license, or yeah. is it because you just don't have the means to actually drive, like with hand controls and yeah, stuff like exactly, that? Yeah, exactly, bro. I got a license. I got everything okay. good. Okay. But, uh, I just, okay. It's just right now, you know, I'm I'm not a hundred percent with transferring mm-hmm. by myself. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So like, okay, that's all right. So you having a problem with transfers? Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Okay. Are you using the transfer board? Yeah. Oh, uh, mom. Yeah, I got it back there somewhere it's on the chair. But yeah, I use my definitely use my transfer board. Okay. Um, what do you think is the biggest problem when they come to your transfers? All right. So like, it'd be different, you know, if, if I if the car was kind of straight across, it's kind of it's not. Uh-huh. It's like a what's it called SUV, like a Lexus SUV. Mm-hmm. So I kind of got a, a little okay. bit of a move up. Go up. Yeah. So okay. I can do it now. You know what I'm saying? But usually, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm usually with my mom. You know what I'm saying? It should be on the yeah. passenger side, and we'll just I get my left mm-hmm. leg in. And she'll make sure that left leg, because one thing I realized while transferring, bro, you could mess around, and snap your left ankle, not even knowing, like, because you mm-hmm. just on that pivot and you just move, you know what I'm saying? So she definitely kept me with that. And then, you know, I I, I do the pushing up of myself and getting situated, mm-hmm. whatever the case may be. But that's, yeah, you're right about that, about the transfer. What do you think is the biggest problem when it comes to that? Is it is it the actual transfer from the chair to the to the car, or is it the fact that it's elevated a little bit? What's the biggest problem that you that you feel like you're facing when it comes to that actual transfer? To be honest, uh, it's honestly, I think it's my legs. I got long legs, so like okay. my legs oh, same. damn near in the dashboard, bro, and I'm trying to mm. get in the wheel. You know okay. what I'm saying? It's, it's- okay. Okay, so trust me. Look, I go through that whenever my wife sits in the passenger seat and she moves the chair up, and I go to transfer not even paying attention. You know, and and then my legs hit the dashboard, and then I'm mid transfer. I gotta stop and then go back, oh. right? So for that, I push the chair all the way back, and I would say transfers is how you position your legs. You know, I would say because those legs can benefit you. You know, even though they're not working, but the way how you position them, the way how you position both of them, that right there is the core to a real good transfer. Cause how? Cause I got long legs too. Trust me. If you use your legs to your benefit while you doing that transfer, it'll actually propel you up. You know, like in one fluid motion to where that transfer is no problem. Yeah. Is is you could do it by yourself. You know, you also got to make sure you got good brakes on your wheelchair. It's a lot that comes with it, but I don't want you to feel like it's a burden getting into the car because once you feel like it's a burden you might not want to do it as much. When it comes to your transfers, you need to be so confident that you don't mind transferring onto any surface, really. But at the same time, be careful what you're transferring on to, you know? I, I ain't really, so, uh, I ain't even, I ain't gonna say a lot. I, I've thought about it, but I ain't even transferred to like the couch or like the recliner or okay. that yet. You know what I'm saying? If I'm not, mm-hmm. if I'm not in the, the chair, the shower chair or the bed, yeah. I'm not, that's yeah. what I'm in. You know what I'm saying? Look, trust me, my man. I tell I tell people this all the time. I got the best seat in the house. Back. All right, I I got the best seat in the house. So no matter what I transfer on, it most likely ain't gonna be better than the actual cushion on my wheelchair. 100%. You know, but you do want to do those transfers because that's what's gonna help you build up the confidence when it comes to any other transfer. You know, like look, I, look, I be in the same situation as you. Sometimes I don't transfer onto the couch. You know, and then my wife might say something. Then I might think about it. Then I might transfer to the couch. I might not. You know, but. Lately, I've been transferring onto the couch because, you know, I don't want to be sitting in my chair and then she's sitting on the couch. Yeah, that's weird. Like, it's a little awkward. Yeah, that's right? It's a little though. awkward. <laughs> yeah, right? So, so it's just like, you know, like, you know, because most of the time I'll be like, come on, babe, let's just go to the room, blah, blah. And then sometimes she'll be like, nah, she want to stay in the living room. And it, 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 it's understandable. But that's what it comes to, you know, I don't mind doing it because of the transfer. It's, it's so easy that I could just do it. But at the same time, Every transfer is going to be a different transfer. It's never going to go the same. It's never going to go exactly the same as it went the last time. But that's why you need to be confident enough to where you can make it pretty much almost repetitive to where it's just like you kind of doing the same transfer every single time. Muscle memory. You know? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Muscle memory. Um, uh, I would say... Do you have any questions or any info that you probably, you know, that you want to ask me that you probably ain't got? Or, you know, like, how's your wheelchair? Like, what type of wheelchair did you get? Is it fitted for you? Yeah, it's, it's fitted for me. Okay. Um, I'm, big, I'm mm-hmm. a big dude, man. I'm like 6'4", right? About yep. 280, 290. So, okay. that's another thing I'm trying to make sure I stay on top of. You know, I'm a big dude. I can't let yep. you know, eating habits or, 
you know, not, yep. not being as active start to hinder me where I'm losing mobility because yep. I'm so damn big. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Look, trust me, my man, look. I gained a little weight over this quarantine, so I know how it feels, you know, actually waking up in the bed. Like, it, it, it feels a little, just a little bit harder. You know what I mean? So, look, definitely you, you got to watch the weight because you don't want that to hinder, like, anything when it comes to you being in a wheelchair. Because, like I said, once it feels like it's a burden to you, you ain't going to want to do it. If you feel like getting up is a problem, it's going to be that one time where you be like, you know what, I don't even feel like getting up. I'm going to just lay in the bed. Yeah. You know, and, and, and that's what you don't want. I would just say, do you have any questions for me as far as, like, info that you will want when it comes to being in a wheelchair or anything that you just got questions about that maybe I could probably help you out? Because, like I said, I've been there to where, like, I didn't know anything, and now I feel like I know enough to help somebody out. Well, one thing you did answer for me without even really meaning to was, like, the bladder situation. Uh, mm -hmm. um, for driving, did you have to, like, do anything special to like be able to start back driving or you just had to get the hand control. oh my god <laughs> okay so my driving journey pretty much started two years like it took me two years to actually be able to drive so this is a story in itself so when i was in afghanistan i actually lost uh, not lost but when i was in afghanistan my license expired right so when i got back and everything happened, remember, I still didn't have a license. So so once I actually wanted to start driving again, I had to renew, I had to redo my license. I couldn't renew it because it expired. I had to redo it. And when I went to go redo it, they told me, oh no, it's not gonna be the same process as before. You gotta go through this whole other process. So I had to figure out everything. A long story short, um, man, I had to go, I had to figure out the whole process of actually getting my license, calling the DMV, they didn't know stuff. Look, half the time they didn't know what to do, yeah. you know, but I had to literally f find out all the information and what I had to do. And man, it took me two years from the day I started to the day I actually got my license and started driving. And man, that was one of the biggest things for me was actually driving because it that helped me get get back so much of my independence. Well, I can't wait. Woo, trust me, I know <laughs> the feeling. I know. I look. I know the feeling. So you got your license. The only thing that you don't have is hand controls, yeah, correct? Hand control. oh, yeah. Truthfully, in a vehicle, because I had a truck before this happened. So now my okay, now I, don't, I don't got the truck. You know what I'm saying? I can't. Okay. It. Okay, so you can't even pretty much get into it. Yeah. Okay. So it's gonna be okay. a little bit of a process, you know, to find something that fits me good, something that I like. I ain't driving no no mm -hmm. bullshit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> look, just look. I understand. I look. Look, me either. Me either. The first car I got. Uh, at the time, I had a Charger, a uh, 09 Charger, and I think the first car I got into was a. Uh, after that was a Chrysler 300. I was about to say, it was I looked big. it up on your Instagram. It was like a white one, wasn't it? Yep. Uh, well, well, before that, I had a, a gray yeah. one. I had a smoke gray one. And then for some reason, I wanted the white, so I got the white. But, man, I would say that's that's one of the best cars because the wheelchair fits in there perfectly. The uh, the front on the passenger and the driver's side is big enough to where if you got long legs, it worked perfectly. So anything on that chassis, I felt, was, was actually pretty good. You know? Uh, the Dodge Chargers on that same chassis, mm -hmm. so it 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 is very comfortable. That's why I didn't mind getting a Charger, you know, uh, it, cause it's just so big. Bro, it's just so big on the inside. Charger so hard, bro. I appreciate <laughs> it. I appreciate. It. Thank you, my man. Thank, thank. Uh, man, look, it's so hard not driving, especially right now when they come to them gas prices. Cause you already know how them car man. You spend, the you gas spend is the worst. Just to get down the street. Look, exactly, 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 man. And with California gas prices, it's no joke right now. So I ain't going to keep you too much longer. I appreciate you coming on, sharing your story, my man. Um, I appreciate you, man. Uh, look, no problem, my man. Like, uh, I appreciate you watching for real, for real supporting because, honestly, me actually uploading to YouTube was, was one of the main things that really had, helped me get out of my funk, man. Because at the time I was uploading – a different type of videos i didn't start on youtube doing this i started on youtube doing something totally different and then my channel got deleted like in 2017 at 66,000. and i was like you know what let me just go ahead and pivot to something Change else energy on it. and start yeah exactly and once i did that that helped man that helped me so it's much right. because it, people wanted to know about my life and i didn't want to share at first but i realized and my wife helped me realize that i'm helping a lot of people by bro, doing you help this. me bro so it's big yeah it's bigger than just me you know, it's the knowledge getting out there is, is what's really going to impact somebody because, man, I have so many people hit me up and, you know, 
they having problems with bowel management, uh, bladder management, you know, sex. You know, it's just it's it's a big thing. You know, um, how are you in that department? If you don't mind everything, me asking, you sexually active? Good, it's like my boy. It, oh, you good? Oh, I did, I did, I did, I did, I did. <laughs> yeah, I did. We good, we good, we good with it. All right. Um, like I said, do you have any more questions that you want to ask? You nah, good? Man. Chuck, hey, look, look, the time is right now. If you if you got a question about something, my man, let look. Trust me, I know how it feels wanting to ask something, but really not wanting to ask. I mean, me. to be honest, though, I do have a few questions, but it's something kind of just me and you. You know what I'm saying? Just, okay, okay. Look, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Look, I look. I tell people that all the time. You know what I mean? Like people hit me up in my DMs, and a lot of people don't really like to like uh, come out with it. But I tell them, my man, look, the time is now. Look, if you got something that you want to ask, you know, look, do it because. Look, like I said, it's bigger to you. It's, you know, like this, this really has to do with your whole life, the people around you, everything. So, look, shout out to your support system. Well, I, for love, real, I love for my support system, man. Because if you got a strong support system, I mean, you get through anything. Facts. All right. All right. I know it's a tough time right now, but look, as long as you waking up every day, look, we blessed. We still here. Look, at, look, for me, every day just felt better. You know, the, the look. I ain't gonna lie. That's why I gained a little bit of weight because the food I eat tastes that much better. You know what I mean? Because once I just realized the fact that I like they told my they told my mom I wasn't gonna make it pretty much. You know, but just me knowing that and knowing that I could have been dead, it just man everything tastes that much better. The water I drink tastes that much better. Everything just really thinking about that I couldn't be here. That I could be in the cassock somewhere. It just makes me appreciate it that much more, even though I'm in a wheelchair. I could have died in 2012 and not got to experience the social media era. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, or not, or or never get to drive a Hellcat. You know what I mean? So, look, I know if you're going through something right now, I know it can be tough. But trust me, there's always tomorrow. All right? Th look, look, things can get better for you if you allow them to get better. All right? So, I, I just want to let you know that. And I appreciate you coming on, sharing your story about everything, yes, my man. Me and you going to wrap offline, you know, you know. You, Look, anything you want to ask me, ask me then, all right? Because trust me, I know how I, you know, can be, especially when, you know, like we're doing this and everything like that. So, like I said, I just want to say I appreciate you for coming on, my I man. Thank you. And man. is there anything that you want to share? Shout out anybody else. Shout out to your support system, your mom, dad, Shout anybody? Out support system, man. Without them, I'd be. Yeah. I'd be. No telling where I'd be, man. Exactly. Hey, man, man. Shout out to Pops, too. You know, you know, Pops shared the channel. Shout out to Pops. You feel me? So. So, hey, look, 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 I appreciate my man because I know a lot of the things that I found out, especially when it came to actually having sex again, I found out on YouTube. I found out from a YouTuber. All right. I, I can't remember his name. I think uh, I think it was like Paralyzed Living. Yeah. Like, man, he yeah, he was just sharing so much stuff. And like, like I said, I ain't I won't take your information from nobody, but it was stuff that I actually wanted to know. You know, shit, you know, what I mean, I like having sex. Yeah, you feel yeah. me? So, so you know, I was like, you know what, man, I ain't doing it. I'm like, hold on, I need to get back active, you know. Yeah, yeah, look, I got on his channel. I looked up everything. I was at my doctor the next day. Look, I, like, I told him, I, I, need, I need to get up in there ASAP. You know what I mean? Like, look, hey, look, he said, he said, uh, I'm going to prescribe you this. Go get it and then set up another appointment uh, and I'm going to show you how to use it. Man, I ain't wait. I, look, as soon as I got it, I was on, I was on YouTube. I was on, I was looking up pictures, how to use it. I was over there injecting it. Like, <laughs> look, I ain't waste no time. I ain't waste That's no time. Funny. I went back, I went back the next week. He was like, uh, uh, do right, you want me to show you how to use it? Well, he ain't pretty much asked me. He pretty much told me. I was like, nah, I'm good. I already been using it. He was like, what? I said, yeah, my man, I, look. We hit the ground running. I used it the same. Exactly. Look, exactly. Exactly. So, like I said, I appreciate you coming on, my man. Thank you. Shout out to Pop. Shout out to Mom. Shout out to everybody. Uh, shout out to you, as my, you too, my man. Uh, look, it doesn't end right here. This just starts a new journey. Yes, All right? Man. All right, my man. I appreciate you coming I mean, on. good, man. Got to let it go on you.